Oh. Hello there fellow modellers, Steve here and it's been five months since I last made a video which was back in I think it was around August September and I had the beard but obviously that had to go so obviously we're all still in lockdown at the moment but it's sort of hopefully getting to the end of the tunnel now there's light at the end of the tunnel because when I last did the video I was saying that the club meetings were opening up again we had two meetings and then obviously it went down that you couldn't have a meeting of six people or more so they got ended and then obviously Telford was cancelled which was a blow because I was looking forward to it mind I've hardly spent any money this year I hardly bought any kits I think I've only bought about I think three or four which was about last summer and all I've been ordering offline was just uh, I ordered some uh, some clear fix which I use for putting canopies on I could have got some out of the local Phoenix but when I needed it it had went back into lockdown again so the only thing that was open in Phoenix was the food shop so you couldn't go upstairs and get that so I had to order it offline and I've ordered a few I think it was a few paints that I didn't have but other than that I've bought no kits at all I've been looking at uh, some kits but I haven't really bought any I think the last one that I got was uh, the Revel 148, 148 scale F818 Hornet in the Morgans of Maverick for the film Top Gun Maverick which hopefully will come out this year because there's rumours that the James Bond film No Time To Die is being put back till November but the studios haven't really released an official statement yet with some online source but you don't want to believe everything you read online so we'll see how that goes but hopefully I mean I've I've went back to work now I'm back three days a week not at what I usually do I'm working in one of the other departments so it's been a bit different and I'm only doing three days a week and getting paid for off for the rest so we'll see what happens in the end of April but other than that uh, with the nights drawn in now I've been building quite a lot of models as probably everybody has and I've finished some of the ones that I'm going to show you were finished last year but I'd never got round to doing them uh, to showing them so we'll start off straight away where have I got? I've got a, a list of what I've got to write down somewhere. Where have I put it? Oh, come on, where is it? I brought it up. Ah, oh, there it's right. I was watching my last video last night to go through things that I've uh, put that I've showed. So we'll start off first with something that I completed last year which was the group build warts and all that was organised by Nigel Wells and Mike Campbell hi there lads hope you're all okay and theirs was uh, out of the fire into the cold or, or but it was set from 1970 to 1988 or 89 and you could there was a multitude of minor wars obviously big wars Vietnam uh, the first Gulf War the Falklands War uh, the Yom Kippur War the war in Lebanon which is obviously but I did I'll start off with it I did a super head on Dar in the markings of the Argentine Navy and I actually did went online and got a picture of the carrier uh, I'll pronounce this right, Vin, Vin Ticanico de Mayo, which is re literally translated as 25th of May, which is Argentina's national deer. The carrier itself, I think it's been scrapped now. 
but obviously at the time these were operating from it bearing in mind that I don't think the carrier ever ventured out of port the flu from land bases along with Skyhawks from the Argentine Air Force but we'll start off with it I've got me handheld thing and we'll go into it now and there it is with the carrier deck which is just made out of a slab of uh, plasterboard and I managed to get all the markings for it and the plane itself was a fairly easy build the only problem was the decals as you can see by that's that. the decals went on terrible now there's a lad in our club I can't remember his name he built exactly the same aircraft and he said the decals weren't very good the only thing that went on good which he agreed with us was the Argentine flag on the tail it's cut a bit there like but you got no silvering from that at all and I used the Microsoft Sol and set but as you can see there you can see the silver and the terrible and the anchor on the wing that's terrible as well but on the whole I think it was there an academy kit 170 second scale it was a fairly easy build not much detail in the cockpit and I think it I don't think it come with a pilot but I wasn't planning on putting a pilot in anyway so that's that now that's the only thing I've got out with carrier decks I've got a, an American aircraft carrier deck but it's hidden away somewhere so I'll just show the now first of all obviously this is one of my favorites finished and guess what it's a Hornet Everybody that watches these videos should know now that I like Hornets. This one is the Airfix kit, not the one that's been issued now that's in the catalogue. There's a starter kit, I don't know what markings it's got, it might actually have the same markings. And there's obviously a one from Top Gun Maverick. It has the markings of his plane, but it's an older. Uh, one of the older versions of the Hornet with the round intakes but he flies I think it's the E in the film which is the bigger version of the Hornet the Rhino they call it but this one it's in the markings of Marine Squadron VMF Air 451 which is known as the Warlords And obviously with it being a hut's pot of another one to add to my Hornet collection. It has two Sparrow missiles on the air, where the air intakes are. Two bombs on each pylon and two drop tanks and sidewinders on the wing tips. And it's a Marine Corps Air Squadron. So that's that, the FE-18 Hornet. Right, what have I got? Oh, where's me bit of cardboard? And there it's there, right. This is something that I finished last year. I forget what the kit was, what make the kit is. But it's the Mitsubishi A5M Claude, Japanese carrier based fighter, the one that preceded the A6M Zero. Now I've wanted one of these for quite a while and I looked at the last couple of shows we went to last year and the year before which was Telford and the last show we went to last year which was Bolton 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 yeah in January I think and they had a 148 scale one there but it was very pricey now I bought this online and that's 170 seconds, so I said I'll just go away with that. And I did that. 
I think it was the first monoplane fighter the Japanese Navy operated. It had fixed wing undercarriage, fixed undercarriage and an open canopy. Which might have been okay. I don't think it operated over the Pacific. It was mainly over China and it must have been very cold up in the air. Open cockpits. And that was quite an easy build. Easy kit to build. The most difficult was the Markans, especially the ones on the wings. So that was the Claude. <laughs> now this is a kit that I got. Was inspired by uh, by Lynn, Chancellor North Wales. I can never pronounce your surname. Hi there, Lynn. Hope you're doing okay. And it's a BV. I think it's a two six two six three. It was based on an, ex, uh, an uprated version of the ME163 Comet, which you can see of the lines. And there was two, I think, made. And they flew them in Russia, because the kit comes with Russian markings, and I think Len did his in Russian markings, all silver. And what he did say was, I was watching his video, he says, I would like to see this in different mark and say you could make it a German Navy interceptor and something in my mind twigged it says ah oh, yes ah oh. so this I forget what kit it was but it come all the way from the Ukraine and it took absolutely ages which is around the April May June time last year when everything totally shut down and it took absolutely ages for it to come but it come and I did it in the Markans of a what if of a Japanese, a Japanese a German Navy interceptor that would have flew from the Graf Zeppelin if it had ever gone into service and had never been sunk because obviously this was later in the war and there's a pilot in there but you can't see him very well and I did the mottled camouflage on the fuselage with a brush and that red flash there was off an ME109T kit that I have that was actually going to fly from the Grass Zeppelin but due to inter-service rivalries it never happened and I've got the arrestor hook at the end because he actually said that he would actually see want to see my take on it so there it is, it's a German Navy interceptor and there's the underside easy kit to build I think the most difficult was probably doing the camouflage. Put one of the various many designs that never got off the drone board. <clears throat> and this one was a one that I sent away for, I think it was the previous year because one of the lads in our club John who builds airline as he has he got the same kit and I've sent him a few photos when I built it and he says I've done a very good job on it but I uh, mentioned that the decals especially around the nose were a bit dodgy and he's he, in his message he says that Roden decals as a Roden kit are always they're not very good decals, but I've managed to get them on. The only, like the nose there, and the cheat line, one of the Hawaiian Airlines. I left it as Hawaiian Airlines because I have visited Hawaii and I like it. But he did, I think it was, he got a pair of Scandinavian Airlines system markings. He said these were crap, but I like them anyway. <laughs> that wasn't an easy kit to build. And I've sprayed the silver there with a rattle can. And it seems to have come out all okay. here. And there isn't I can't actually see any silver on the markings. It was a very nice kit to build that. I like that. 
That's a Convair CV360. One of the many airliners that was built to replace the DC-3. But the old saying goes, it's the only replacement for a DC-3 is another DC-3. Now, this is something I've finished, but it just took us about three years to build. And it's the Challenger Mark II British Army tank. And it's in the markings of Kosovo, when the British Army moved into Kosovo, I think it was about 1999, in the Civil War there. This was the the trumpeter kit. Great kit to build. Pardon. And I've made the diorama out of plasterboard. And what I did was I've got some a couple of sheets, well about I think it's about ten sheets of cobblestones road. So I'll put that on and used a bit of plastic and made a footpath and there's a fence there now I was planning on building a wall but that never got further than the uh, halfway stage so I've put that to one side for now and then I decided to do a fence the posts there are just bits of sprue and the fence posts the fence uh, the fence slats are just the cocktail sticks you get out of coffee shops when, when we used to go to coffee shops and sit in them <laughs> to stir the coffee. And I've got a load of them, I use them for stirring paints and I thought they're, they're perfect for fence because it's got the round bit at the top. And I used the slats there across. And this lamp post I got out of a kit, I think it was one of the spares uh, a box of spares that I bought for a couple of quid at the air uh, at one of our club meetings. Now to get the concrete effect, as you can see by the, I've got some. Uh, it's spray that makes a marble effect. I use it for the fireplace in the sitting room down uh, downstairs. I sprayed it with that, and it looks the concrete effect, and tapered it off there and sprayed that silver for the lamp part and you can't see it but it's got a bulb in the bulb is just a bit of thick clear sprue the grass is there obviously and the mud effect was an idea that I got off Stuart Avery from Stuart Avery's models hi there Stuart hope you're okay he bought on one of his dioramas when he was in his old flat uh, fake mud so I put that on there as though it's churning up and I've put it all the way along there and it's given the effect that it's churned mud up over the field and there's a bit there and it's come onto the road it hasn't knocked down the fence yet now these aerials three of them were an idea that I got off he's called Mark but he goes by Armour Empire and I've met him a few times at uh, Telford and he did the Challenger 1 it was a Challenger 1 tank and the aerials he used were off a broom so I cut them and obviously painted them black because we've got a blue broom you can't have blue aerials <laughs> and stuck them in there I used them on my T-34 as well and they look like aerials now there wasn't very many there was a Quite a big decal sheet, but it must be for different, different uh, tank regiments in the British Army. So I've just did that, and it's well. There's a Scottish flag there, so it might be a Scottish tank regiment. But I enjoy building that tank and the diorama. And I'm pleased with how the diorama's turned out. Very good.
This is something that I've been building on and off for about three years now. It's the Tamiya 135 scale SES Jeep. The one the lads in our club, Ian, he built one exactly the same. This did is a bit different, but you can modify it. But I was very pleased how that turned out when I eventually finished it. <laughs> now I painted the figures. The figures have turned out OK. But when I do eyes on figures, they look terrible. So they did have uh, goggles to protect you from the uh, sand. And they were originally went on uh, the top of the headband there. So I've just painted them and put them over the eyes as so they're wearing them so you can't see the eyes because my eyes are terrible my painting eyes is terrible as well <laughs> and I've uh, dusted it with uh, desert sand powder a bit of a dirt wash and I've got a diorama that's of desert sand but it's drying at the moment with a palm tree on and a camel which I picked up at a show last year or the year before but I've got to paint, I've got to get the right colours for that but I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out SES Jeep else that I'm doing which is another Jeep I bought them at the same time I think now I've finished that but the, you get one crew member with it so I thought of doing it at a scene around Arnhem time I bought a kit of American uh, American Army paratroopers and two German soldiers have surrendered to them. So I'm going to do it. I think they're in there. Oh, where are they? There's one of them. And that looks a bit deformed with his arms, but I've stuck the arms on there because they'd have gone. That's a kneeling one, I think. He's the medic. <coughs> and I'll do a little uh, field diorama. But that was quite a good kit to make as well. That's a tyro uh, tyrama. Uh, Tamiya one as well. Now, what else have I got on? Ah yes, this was orig these were originally Obviously this never happened, well not yet anyway <laughs> But last year one of the lads in our group was saying that we seem to be uh, lagging in themes so we decided because we're all living uh, we're all well we're not i'm not from we're all living newcastle that would do something connected to northeast heritage so what i decided to do was hms king george v which was built by as it was known then swan hunter and wiggum richardson on the River Tyne in Newcastle and an American Liberty ship which was originally based which was based on an original design that was made in JL Thompson's of Sunderland which is where I'm from which is it's in the northeast so there's me two 
connections and um, I've finished these but they've got all the rigging to put on and there's a load to go on the Liberty ship with all the cargo cranes, the cranes with the lines and and there's a few to go on the King George V with the aerials and all that in there and I made, it, made them into water, you could make it what, 25, oh god uh, the Liberty ship come with either full hull or water line but the King George V which was the Revel one I had to cut it the same thing I did with the Iron Duke a couple of years ago and the Liberty ship was the trumpeter kit and I'll, when they're finished I'll design a cardboard background with the different uh, pictures of Sunderland and Newcastle on that it's North East Heritage so hopefully that'll get done probably this year sometime what else This one I've, I've just recently finished. I've got three minutes left. And it was my second entry to Ian Poulton's group build group, which was NATO versus Warsaw Pact. And I did the bear, the TU95 bear for me first one, but I never got this finished before it ended. And it's the McDonnell F2H Banshee in Royal Canadian Navy Markins. I'll have to go off soon because I'm going to end. This is a long video. And that was the. Oh God, I can't remember the name of the, the, the firm that manufactured it. But that was the entry, and I haven't put that on the list, but it's ended now because. Uh, Another lad's took it over because he's took a break from it. Uh, the lad called Robert Art Arnoff. I'm sorry if I've got your name, your pronunciation of your name wrong. But I've entered a Grumman E2C Hawkeye because it's a, a reconnaissance group build. So that was the Banshee in Royal Canadian Navy Markins. I'm nearly done now. I'll have to sign off now. So that was the last one of. a minute left right so I'll probably upload this video tomorrow and I'll see you guys on the next video and everybody keep safe happy modeling see you later bye now